Hey YouTube and Facebook friends, it's Eden. Uh, my apologies for being gone for so long. We've just had bouts of illness in the family. Um, we had spring break and then um, I got sick. <laughs> and then after that, um, my son seems to have sprained his little ankle. So he's home this week. So, you know, I just haven't been able to come on YouTube or Facebook as regularly as I used to. Uh, but I thought I'd just sneak this video in while my son was asleep. He just crashed in the middle of the day, which he never does. I was like, oh, well, I have about a half hour before I have to pick up his big sister. So I just thought I'd squeeze one in. And today I want to talk about making vegan products or vegan friendly products. Um, it's something that comes up a bit. And for some reason, that theme has been present for the past few days. So I thought it might be a good time to just help you figure that out. It might also be helpful for people who um, are newly vegan who want to source vegan products. Our family, we're pretty much vegan. We're more like vegan because we're vegan, but we do consume bee products like honey and bee pollen and stuff like that. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just going to go through a little list I wrote down here so I don't get distracted because I only have ooh, about 20 minutes left. Um, so let's talk about the first product that you'd want to substitute, and that would be beeswax. And you find that in a lot of pomades. You'll find it in salves, people who make salves. Um, sometimes you'll find it in hair products that are emulsions as well or skin products. Um, and it's used to emulsify, it's used to thicken, um, it's used to, to give some texture and hardness to things. And it also, um, in certain things, for example, in shaving balms, it can help to unclog pores, surprisingly, because you think, oh, beeswax is going to clog, but it has the opposite effect. Um, so one thing you'd want to use, there's several things you can use. Um, one is a product called olive wax. Um, it's usually marketed um, as olive wax. Um, it's it's INSEE name or the name that you would um, the scientific name would be olive unsupan un olive unsaponifiables, right? But you can find it at places like um, Ingredients to Die For under the name olive wax um, at Lotion Craft. I think they call it Ollie wax. I'll put some links in the description box. But basically, what's nice about olive wax, um, as opposed to uh, beeswax, is that it tends to be less comedogenic, meaning it clogs the pores less. And also, it, um, it has a way of like conditioning the skin and hair. It's actually able to penetrate the skin. Um, so it, it really tends to have a really lovely feel on skin and hair products, in my experience. Um, and you can substitute it one-to-one -one for beeswax. Another thing you could use is castor wax. Now, castor wax is um, a product that has come about in a bid to substitute something more natural for mineral oil and um, petroleum products, basically petroleum-derived products. So Vaseline, for example, baby oil. Um, so castor wax is basically castor oil that's been hydrogenated. The way people hydrogenate vegetable oils to make margarine, um, they've hydrogenated castor oil to make castor wax. And sometimes you find it in wax form, like in little pellets the way you would beeswax. Um, or you can find it in the form of castor jelly, which is how they sell it at Essential Wholesale, which is basically... If you open the jar, it looks exactly like Vaseline, just a little bit yellower and has that same sticky consistency, probably a little stickier. But um, that's something that you could use as well. Because it is stickier than something like a beeswax or an olive wax, I would use maybe a third of the castor wax with two thirds of something else, like an olive wax or some of the other alternatives that I'm going to mention. Um, another alternative would be sterols. Now these are going to be more expensive and if you choose to use sterols you're going to have to um, intend to have a higher end product 
but basically um, the two sterols I know of are coming out of um, Active Concept Technologies and that and Formulator Sample Shop is the vendor for that in the US and in Canada and um, if you just look up acai sterols or pomegranate sterols they basically created a thick milky waxy substance out of um, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's a fat portion it must be the fat portion of the oil but you can use this as a one-to-one -one substitute for beeswax and it's nice in that it's really hydrating as well because it helps to trap water into the hair or skin or whatever application it's being used as um, it's also more exotic so it kind of in addition to it being expensive it also raises the perceived value of your product and um, it's less clogging to the pores and you also bring that nice antioxidant quality of the acai or the pomegranate to the skin or hair um, candelilla wax is another one that one is pretty hard um, I pretty much would only use it for a salve like maybe like a lip balm or a healing salve of some sort that's been infused with herbs and essential oils I don't know that I would use it for much else because it is a bit of a harder wax but melted down and mixed with oils you can get it to be nice and soft and um, a great substitute for beeswax all right um, the next thing you'd want to substitute in a vegan product is lanolin now lanolin is usually well it's not usually it's always derived from sheep's wool okay so even if you are a vegetarian um, you know not all wool is uh, cruelty free in fact most of it isn't if that's an issue for you if that's something you're concerned about um, so, so there's that unless it's like alpaca wool or something um, but I think it's basically derived from like boiling sheep's wool uh, wool has a bit of oil to it, which is why you can use oils to clean wool and things sometimes But it, it removes the oil part from the wool and then that's how you get that lanolin Which can be a very healing substance um, But in this particular case sterols are a great substitute for lanolin for um, vegan products as well as um, sterols and and the castor wax as well would also be a nice substitute because it's you know both of them are going to be have that same sticky quality um, the sterols less so they'll have the thickness um, but they'll also have the hydrating quality whereas the castor wax will have the high emollients and the um, the thick sticky quality that lanolin has you're making something that's really super rich and just a little bit on the heavier side so the next thing is keratin now when you just see keratin and you're buying a product and you're a vegan unless it says vegetable keratin then you to be on the safe side you want to assume that it's animal derived um, and so a lot of the keratins that you'll see in products aren't necessarily plant-based um, when they are plant-based in terms of suppliers they're always careful to say plant-based if they're not plant-based um, then you know they'll, <laughs> they'll they'll say that so you can easily substitute the keratin in a product by using hydrolyzed proteins okay um, the vegetable keratins are usually um, Put in things you know to kind of boost up the skin um, to to strengthen the hair to kind of do any sort of repair of damage because protein is structural so it kind of helps with anything structural with hair or skin but you could easily do that with hydrolyzed plant proteins you can um, if it's something for say like heat protection if you're using a keratin in a heat protecting product you could do something like aloe vera mixed with a certain kind of gum um, like um, acacia gum is a good one um, sclerotium gum which is a mushroom gum I've seen that at, um, at ingredients to die for um, 
There's also a product called Vegan Kerazyme, which is a mixture of bamboo and a, a bunch of hydrolyzed proteins and a certain kind of mushroom that Formulate a Sample Shop has come up with. And that is really nice replacement for animal-based carotene. It's called Vegan Kerazyme, and of course that will be in the link in the description. Um, will be in the de will be linked in the description box. Sorry, my mouth is not cooperating with me today. Um, so so that's a good thing to to use. Bamboo also can sometimes do that because it has silica, and so it kind of creates that sort of layer, protective layer, um, that works really well in hair and skin products as well. Um, honey. Honey's the next thing that you'd want to replace in a vegan product. A lot of vegans won't do honey, or you just can't classify your product as a vegan product if it has honey or any other bee-related um, byproducts in it. So for honey, um, the most obvious substitute would be agave. And um, just like you, you would use agave in food, you would use agave um, in your product it has that same humectant quality where it draws water to the surface of the skin or to the hair um, also draws water from outside um, so you could use um, agave or even um, i've seen date sugars used um, instead of that i've seen um, glycerin used if it's just for the humectant properties um, if you're using it for some of the sort of stickier properties, um, if you're using it for mineralizing properties, especially if you're doing um, raw honey, you could use uh, sea kelp bioferment, which is also very hydrating, but it is kind of more gel-like, um, so it would be a great substitute and also elevates the perceived value because it's expensive and it's also a little bit more exotic. Um, and you're bringing in probiotics, which is nice. So you bring another living element into it to substitute for the uh, raw enzymes that you'd find in the raw honey. So those are nice substitutes for honey. Um, you know, I've also seen honey hydroxo hydroxypropyl trimonium or honey quat. That's used a lot in conditioners and conditioning products. And you could easily choose any number of quats to substitute for that and then add some kind of humectant. So you have your quat conditioner like behentramonium chloride or you know any kind of um, guar gum, guar, um, guar cat which is guar um, hydroxypropyl trimonium which also is used a lot in conditioning pr products. You could use any of those instead of the honey hydroxypropyl trimonium and then um, that would be a perfect vegan substitute. And then if you wanted to add the moisturizing properties, you could go back to any of those humectants I mentioned, like any sort of sugary things um, to draw water to the skin or hair, as well as the seaweed extracts would we'll also do that for you. Silk protein, which seems to be in everything. There's so many products I want to try, but I'm like a uh, silk protein. Um, so I, I won't try them, but um, occasionally if I have a client or two who wants to recreate a certain product they like and it has silk protein in it, I might try that just for trial to see what it is I'm recreating, but generally I try not to buy things with silk protein in them. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It really works beautifully and it's a very effective beautifier of skin and hair. Um, but if you're making a vegan product, obviously it's not appropriate. Um, definitely you can substitute any of the hydrolyzed proteins to get the softness, uh, that the, the softening quality, um, things like any of the fruit extracts give that same softness that the silk gives. So mango, guava, um, banana, they all give that same softness. And I've seen the fruit powders at New Direction Aromatics. Um, the protein part, you can use any hydrolyzed protein. Um, and some of the slip you can get from other things. From marshmallow root, you can get it from bamboo, you can get it from hibiscus, which is also softening. Hibiscus is softening. 
so they're you know you're when you're going for silk protein you're going for softness and you're going for structure and you can get those in other things the last thing I'm going to talk about is milk protein okay um, and so a lot of times people are going for um, you know the lactic acid because it kind of exfoliates the skin and there are many ways you can ex do that kind of ex same exfoliation um, it softens um, you know as well as you know the structural aspects of the protein I've spoken about proteins um, at length so you don't need that um, in terms of exfoliating you can use pineapple extract that has bromelain which is an enzyme which is very good at exfoliating um, in terms of if you want a milky type of quality you can use coconut milk um, you can use almond milk um, coconut milk is probably going to be the most effective and even for people who are coconut averse in terms of the oil the milk is somehow milder and easier to absorb so it can work that way as well but um, I'm gonna leave it at that for creating vegan body products I'm sorry I'm a little congested I hope I didn't rush and babble too much and um, I'll see you in the next video it'll probably be a pricing workshop um, I don't know when my son is gonna feel better I don't know I have a ton of work to catch up on <laughs> because I've just been so behind because of all the various illnesses and all that um, but I will try to maybe come back next week or late this week with a pricing workshop because that's another thing that has shown up in my inbox a lot and just questions in general and I'll do a full detailed breakdown of how to price your products all right take care